Hi. In this breakdown, I'm going to show some of the methods I use in creating one of our Lava Rock pack scenes for Megascans. I want to cover setting up a palette of assets, lighting and camera setup, composition, detailing, render settings and color correction. To quickly build up the palette, I use Megascans bridge to import my assets. There is a more detailed tutorial on how to use the bridge using the link below this video. After importing the assets I want to use, I save this palette file separately from the main scene. From here I can set up proxies, make sure my shaders are working, and build my vegetation. To build my plants, I cut them out by using the alpha as a guide. I give them some geometry so I can model pseudo 3D plants to get some interesting shapes. This process needs a little love and a keen eye, so making sure they are as accurate as possible to any reference I had was essential. I really want to stress that taking the time to build up a good library of plants from Megascans atlases will go a long way. Focus on emulating what you see in reference photos. For example, how leaves bend, the scale and shape of the plant you're trying to achieve, Making good use of dead leaves and scattered debris are all critical in building believable assets for your scene. For this particular plant, I didn't go too crazy on the detail because it's not a hero asset. Once it's in the scene, I'll tend to it a little more by adding more dead debris and clutter. Take notes throughout the project. I constantly iterate and edit the assets. I keep this file separate to preserve my work and have a master set of assets to pull into the scene. Here is a reference photo I'm working off. My goal was to match the look and feel of the photo with assets found in the lava pack. For this project I used 3D Studio Max 2017 along with Redshift and a sprinkle of i2's forest pack. Let's start with some basic lighting. There are a few ways to light a scene. For simplicity, I use a basic Redshift sun system with a Redshift physical sky. Since it is physically based, it's a great way to make sure the shaders are working out of the box. Note that this is the same lighting setup I use in the palette file. A really good rule to follow when a photorealistic look is your goal is to leave the physical sun settings alone and just adjust the height of the sun for what time of day you want to achieve. I highly recommend never to increase or decrease the intensity because this will start to break the reality the sun system and physical camera provide. We will touch on how to get a scene brighter or darker later, but keep in mind we are digital photographers and we should think of making a scene brighter or darker in terms of exposure, not in terms of making the sun output more light. Camera work goes hand in hand with lighting, so I set up a physical camera quickly and get the settings I know I want adjusted. To help me, I have a few assets already in the scene to make sure the camera settings are working correctly. When setting up my camera, I try to position it where I think the photographer was standing. If it was yourself, then you have a huge advantage because you can position it accurately. Next, I like to look at the EXIF data of a photo to see what ISO, shutter duration, f-stop. These settings are not by any means set in stone, but it's a good place to start. Also, when doing stills, I like to adhere to the 4-3 ratio. I see a lot of stills rendered that use a 16-9 ratio, which is great if you want to mimic a still from a film, but if you're going photo, 4-3 really helps sell the photograph feel. While working on my lighting, I disable depth of field to help speed up the process of getting really good lighting. Note, depth of field in Redshift is done through the rendering effect panel by adding Redshift Bokeh. Once I have the camera in and my subject to dial in the settings, I do a few renders and some basic adjustments on the camera settings and sun. Once I feel it's okay, I move on to adding more assets and rendering again to see if the lighting is holding up. Composition for realism can be tricky, but since we have a good reference photo, we have the blueprints to get us where we need to go. Just like a painter starts with big washes and block in colors, we will start by adding the largest elements of the scene, which in this case are the rocks. I start by finding which rocks best match the photo and roughly lay them out. I try to lock in my focal point early in the process and building out the environment from there. This is a very important step, so taking the time necessary to make sure the shot is feeling correct is key. Don't get bogged down with small details, only concern yourself with the largest elements. 
For instance, I knew there was going to be a lot of vegetation, so I didn't get too locked up in trying to make every rock fit perfectly. Another key element in making photoreal renders is to remember the rule of thirds, but try to break it. Renders that look real have a certain amount of chaos in them. If you look at a set of photos taken from an area, not many follow the famous composition rule. They almost break it at every turn. I keep this in mind while I set up my camera and my assets. Now comes the fun part, vegetation. The shot will really start coming to life quickly. At this point I grab the vegetation from my palette file. The succulents are a major feature in this pack, so building a few modular pieces of the vines was essential to filling up areas quickly. Along with Redshift SSS shader and some tinkering with the settings I was able to match the photo with a relative ease. After first pass on large details it's time to really bring the scene to life with super fine details. Again I want to focus on the succulents. We 2D scan the dead vines and dead succulent spears, which give a wonderful white and grey contrast to the lush greens and popping pinks of the succulents. I make the card cutouts and use the displacement maps to add some live displacement to give a little depth and shape to the cards. I then take these cards and build up dead areas under all the succulents I have placed. Again, looking at my ref constantly for how they lay, where they are, why they grow and die the way they do. After this step I copy out all the dead cards, collapse them and make them unrenderable. I then use this piece of geo to drive scatter systems using forest pack. I scatter smaller bits of dead succulent spears, leaves, small sticks, anything I can observe I throw in the scatter system. What this step achieves is breaking up the surface of the cards even more to push the chaos and clutter of the undergrowth. Since I'm using forest pack, now is a good time to set up my grass scattering. I cut out my cards and do a few bends and breaks to get some natural variation in the grass stalks. Once scattered, they will break up any uniformity that straight cards would produce. I use some simple unrenderable planes that conform to the rock surfaces to scatter the grass on, and tweak the settings to get a natural look. A key to making grass look real and weathered is to make sure it doesn't feel uniform, hence our bends and break model into some blades. Also, as with other plants, adding dead matted grass under the live grass adds a lot of depth and helps solidify the realism of the scene. Now that all the major elements are present, I take the time to set dress little plants and sticks around. Again, constantly checking the reference for how the plants are growing in the scene. If I have the time I'll focus on a small area for an hour, or more, to push it to the max in terms of accuracy, then take what I learned and apply it to the rest of the scene. It's almost time for my favorite parts and reaping the fruit of your labor, color correcting the final image. But first I need to render. My final render was set up at 4K. Brute Force GI for primary and secondary bounces. I grabbed a ref photo from the scanning site and placed it as a self-illuminated card in the background, matching the reference as close as possible. In the effects panel I re-enable redshift depth of field and did some test renders to match the amount of doff I saw in the photo reference by playing with the COC radius and power. I also experimented with redshift bokeh and set it to white color sum. I used the example image they suggested on redshift wiki. The result was a tad heavy handed for my taste, but with some additional tweaks to the bitmap, some very realistic results can be reproduced. If it's not to your taste, then adding some chromatic aberration in Photoshop is good too. I test my renders at very low settings, min sample at 1 and max samples at 8, and adaptive error threshold at 0.05. For a final render I would change the adaptive error threshold to 0.01 or 0.009 and I would up my samples until I get a clean test render. I save it out as a 16-bit PNG to work with. Once I have a near final or final render I do my color corrections in Photoshop. I try to keep as true to the render as possible by not changing the colors too drastically. I used a ref in the same file to match colors and levels as best as possible. So as you can see the render is very grey and dull compared to the popping colors of the ref. 
My main color correction, or CC, will focus on getting the level and colors more in line, and once I'm happy with that, I'll bake that down and work on the smaller details of finalizing the image. Then I tweak the shadow color by using a selective color layer in, and in this case I push the shadows more blue and take down the yellows a bit. Again, only applying this layer very subtly at a fill of around 15%. I also make sure this color adjustment does not apply to the succulents since they need to stay in the warm yellow range and not a cool green range of color. Next, I tweak the yellows with a selective color layer, and this helps the oranges pop more by replacing some of the yellows with magenta. After I'm happy with the general colors, I tweak the brightness and contrast as well as the levels to get some nice depth in the image, using the reference as a guide. After this, I apply a vibrance adjustment layer to bring out some more of the colors. The stage of basic color correction is done now, and I bake down those layers and work on some final tweaks. The purpose of the last few tweaks is to get the color of the succulents correct as well as their levels. Also increasing the brightness in the middle of the image to draw the eye in, in a bit more. A few tweaks to the background vibrance and the blues of the grass and I'm very happy with the result. With keys to producing this image was having a good reference. Keeping the lighting simple and using the assets to their full potential by taking the ecosystem approach. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Good luck with your own projects and let us know how they turn out. Thank you for watching.